Welcome to another episode of my Refactoring Java video series. In a response to a recent episode, a viewer pointed out that they are interested in learning how to write the tests that assisted refactoring. And I thought, sure, this is an interesting topic. Especially adding the tests to legacy code can be tough. I need to make at least some episodes on this. But why would we want to add tests to a legacy system? If the software is already doing what it should be doing and we don't want to change it, then the effort of adding tests would be wasted. If, however, we needed to make a change to the legacy system, like adding a feature, fixing a bug or upgrading tech, we have to deal with the risk of breaking existing functionality. Often, the current structure of the legacy code does not nicely fit the desired change. Then we want to do preparatory refactorings to make the change easy. Adding tests reduces the risk of breaking existing functionality. But what kind of tests do we want to add? We want to add characterization tests. The term was coined by Michael Feathers in his brilliant book Working Effectively with Legacy Code, which I highly recommend. Characterization tests verify the system's current observable behavior, including bugs. After running the tests, the result should tell if the software is still doing what we expect it to do. Characterization tests are decoupled from the structure of the code. Desired refactorings should not have an impact on the outcome of the tests. The tests should be as fast as possible. We aim for them to finish within seconds or even less than a second. When our tests are fast, we can run them often. This allows us to make smaller, much safer steps. By running the tests after each step, we can check whether the system's behavior was preserved. If our tests were slow, running them often would be costly. This would discourage us from running the tests often and push us towards making bigger, riskier steps, which we don't like. But when we try and add the tests, we run into the legacy code dilemma. The legacy system was not built with testability in mind, so it can be hard to add the tests that we need. We might have to first apply refactorings to the code so that we can add the tests that we need. But to apply those refactorings to the code safely, we want to have unit tests in place. A chicken and egg problem. This is where it gets tricky and where we can learn the lessons of problematic design. Sometimes the most effective way would be to begin with slow system tests. Okay, so let's try and add tests to a legacy code. Uh, this code I found thanks to Ted Young. I think he found the code on Stack Exchange. And it is a really nice example. It is a coffee machine, a command line application, and it contains a lot of static methods. Now, let's just run the application and see what it does. Make this bigger so you can read it. So it prints an inventory and a menu. I can select a coffee. Let's try the coffee latte. Uh, it dispenses the coffee and it uses some of the inventory. The espresso is reduced and the steamed milk is also reduced. Let's try another coffee. Let's try the cappuccino. And again, some of the inventory is reduced. So what other commands are there in the coffee machine? There is an empty command. Does nothing. Okay. I can restock ingredients. I can exit. Now let's try the these commands. First, an empty string. What happens? Nothing. Empty string. Invalid selection. Try again. Okay. Uh, let's try restock. Okay, all the inventory is now restocked. Let's quit the application. So, how would I go about adding tests to this code? It is a command line application and I run it by executing the public static void main. Let's just try and add a test.
I am using Che Unit 5 and Acer Che. What I will do is I will just try and run this coffee machine application in my test, in my unit test. So how do I do it? I'm just executing the drink machine dot main and I'm just providing an empty arcs. Now let's see what happens when I run this. So as you can see the tests keep running and running and running and there is some stuff printed to system out. Now I really don't want to keep the program running. I want it to finish. So I need to provide a way to make it quit. I want to use the quit command for that. But the um, quit command is read from system.in and system.in is a, a global which is kind of a problem here. I could replace it, but then it is replaced for all other users as well. So I would not be able to run tests in parallel. I would like to improve this with a refactoring, but to get it on the test, I think it is sufficient to set a new reader to the system in. Let's go to the test. Set a new input stream and I will use a byte array input stream and I have to provide uh, something here. These are my commands and this is a bytes array. Let's try and input a quit command. I think this should be the fastest way to get the application quit. This should be Q and a new line dot get bytes. Now let's try and run the test again. Okay, so the test did indeed quit and it did put something out. I would like to verify what has been put out. I need to find a way to read this string that has been put out and check if it still equals the expected string. So I need to route the system.out to my own string so I can capture it. Let me make a byte array output stream. And let's set system out to a new print stream of output. So whatever is printed to system out should be printed to my byte array output stream. So I should be able to assert that the output is equal to something. Let's keep it a an empty string for now and run the test. See what happens. So the application finished. It quit. But where is my test result? What happened? Let's look at the drink machine. When I input the quit command, it executes system.exit and the system.exit exits my unit test. Now that is a problem. I am already in this dilemma. I want to add a test to it, but I can't because the code is not built with testability in mind. So I first have to make a change to the code so that I can add tests. So how do I get rid of this system.exit? Maybe if I just break the loop, if the quit command is sent, it will just go out of this loop, it will finish the loop and then the program is over. Yeah, I think this should work. Let's try it with a simple break and run the test again. Uh, 
Okay, so I do have my test result. Right now the assertions are failing. I am expecting an empty string, but I am getting another string. What I can do now is I can just copy the expected string to the unit test and make the assertion. And if I run the test now, there is still a problem. What is the problem? So the contents have differences only in line separators. So I'm expecting LF and I'm getting CRLF. So I think there should be a way to ignore that. Output is a output stream and I need it to be a string. So it shows me different assertions. I think this is it is equal to normalizing new lines. Let's try that. Nice. So I do have my first working test. It tests if I can quit the coffee machine application should quit. So I'm preparing a command, the quit command. I'm setting it to the system.in. I'm rerouting the system.out to my own output stream that I can read later for a search. Then I just run the command line application. After running the application, I am asserting that the output that I get is what I expect it to be. Going this way, I can add many more tests, many more tests for different commands with even various combinations of commands. And this would be the characterization tests. By writing these lines of code, I kind of created a framework that runs the coffee machine application. Now I want to prepare this framework a little bit better for my future tests. So I will extract a method, run coffee machine. I would rather have it return this string. So then this is a string and I don't have to make the two string here. I would like to be able to pass parameters. This is my input. Having this run coffee machine method in place, I am now ready to add more tests to the coffee machine to cover all possible paths in the application. But I would have to write lots of tests and for each test store the recorded output and then assert the output and it would be really tiresome work. I'm lazy so I will use a library for this which makes it a little bit easier. It is called Seamer and I will add it to my dependencies. The Seamer uh, library is not yet on Maven Central, but I have it installed on my machine. You can grab the link in the description. The Seamer makes it easy for me to run the coffee machine with lots of different input combinations and record the output and assert that the behavior is preserved. But for this, I would first make a drink machine runner that records all my desired combinations. And for this, I want to make this a uh, public. And I will move it to a new class, which I will call the um, drink machine runner. Let's move it to the drink machine runner.
and make the seamer record all the possible combinations. So this goes like seamer factory dot persist. And now I have to provide the seam. And then I have to provide a class that is carrying the seam. This is the drink machine runner dot class. And I have to provide some kind of ID that I define. So I will just call it drink machine for now. And the seam is a Lambda function. The seam wraps the coffee machine method, records all the inputs and the return values, persists them. And at a later point in time, I can verify if the code still does what I expect it to do. So this is the type of the returned object. This is a string. And here I will run the coffee machine. This is an array of arguments. And I want to pass the first argument. which is a string. Now I can replace this with a lambda and inline it. Now this is a little bit long, so I will just call it run. So I can now start recording invocations for my scene. Let me first record selecting some kind of a coffee and then quit. So this would be uh, one and then quit. This would be a very simple example. And then I don't need that anymore. I can just extend from the um, seam test from this library. And I just have to implement those methods like the drink machine runner.class, which is carrying my seam and the ID. This is the drink machine. And when I now execute the runner, What this does it is to the target folder, it creates this seamer folder. In the seamer, it creates, according to my defined ID, a folder that contains the persisted seam, a serialized object of my seam, and all the recorded invocations. And you can see here that this is what he recorded, like the arguments that I passed to the invocation and then the result. And I can now run the test. And when I run the tests, my invocations get verified. And if I run the tests with code coverage, I'm seeing that I already got a lot of lines covered. Let's continue with more commands. For example, I did not try the restock command. Let's add a test for it. Record another invocation. Like some coffee. And then restock. And then quit, right? I want to run this first record the results and now I should be able to execute the test now I got two tests right if I now run it with code coverage 
I'm already covering the restock ingredients line. So maybe let's also try an illegal input, an invalid selection. That didn't work. Was it like this? Yeah, that worked. Now I got this line covered. So what is left? There is legal but invalid input. So this should be a coffee that didn't exist. Now let's try that. Let's try, I don't know, 1999 does not exist. Yeah, so I got this covered as well. What is left? So there is some case. Maybe this is the out of stock case. If the stock is smaller than the amount of the receipt that I need, would be. There is an out of stock case. So let's try to get something out of stock. Um, just use the same coffee, I don't know, like five times. Let's see if I'm running out of stock now. Record the invocations and run the tests with coverage. So I did run into the out of stock case. I already achieved 100% code coverage. And that's it. That's one way to add characterization tests to a legacy command line application. I hope you enjoyed the video. The code is available on my GitHub. You can find the link in the description. Try it yourself and tell me what you did. Thanks for watching.